Hey guys, we're going to be going over some Pepakura today, and what all you're actually going to need to get started with this. So right off the bat, you're going to need some paper, specifically cardstock. We're talking the heavy shit here, 110 pounds for those who actually care. And along with that, you're going to need yourself a reliable glue gun. Whether it's high temp, low temp, both temps, I don't care, get you something reliable. I personally prefer high temp, but that's my own personal call. And along with that, you're going to need a hell of a lot of glue sticks. More glue sticks than you might think. The amount I have here, I'm going to run out of these within, I don't know, probably a couple of hours. Next up, you're going to need a knife. Get you one of those good X-Acto blades that you can easily replace the blades. And speaking of blades, pick up quite a few of those as well. You're going to need a lot of blades. You're going to be running through these faster than you think. So go ahead and splurge a little bit. Get you the real sharp ones. If you can get a knife sharpener, go ahead and get one. I don't have one. Oh well. Go ahead and get a ruler. We're not talking plastic or wood. We're talking metal. You want something you can run the blade against and it's not going to be cutting into it. So a metal straight edge helps a lot. You're also going to need printer ink. I've only got two cartridges here. That's not enough. This isn't going to last me. You're going to be going through quite a bit of ink if you're doing a lot of pep printing. And a lot along with ink, you're going to need to get yourself a good, reliable printer. This is the printer I use for all my cosplay stuff. It's got paint on it. It's got glue on it. That's fine. I use it just for cosplay. So, it's lasted me well. Go get yourself a nice printer. Alright, so by now you should have gathered most of your materials, tools, and all the stuff you're going to need to actually put together your armor. But now you've got to ask yourself where you're going to find these Pepecora files and how to open them. So, let's go over that real quick. One way to find Pepecora files is to simply Google for them. Like, to find this file right here, which is for the life-size T60, the one that I used to build my full-scale T60 power armor, I simply Googled Fallout 4 T60 Pepecura files. And this was one of, I don't know, second or third results. By the way, these links will be included down below, so you won't have to Google. Now, when you come to this link right here, you're going to scroll down, and you're going to be tempted to click these links right here. Don't do that. These links are some shady shit. And I don't know where they go. Uh, my ad blocker was like, no, 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 don't touch those. And I was like, okay. Instead, you're going to want to come on down to right here. You may download this papercraft template here. Also, there's a clickable link right there. Don't touch that one either. The only part you care about is right here. Fallout 4 life-size T60 power armor. Click that, and it's going to download a zip file with all the PDOs. PDOs being the file type that Pepecura uses. If you're looking to build the X01 power armor, like I am currently doing, it took a little bit more, it took a lot more Googling, honestly. But I was able to find it on some weird, obscure Pepecura Russian site. And I can't read Russian, but I think I got the general gist. Because, I mean, because pictures. I, I got it because of pictures. So you're going to want to scroll, once you click this link, you're going to want to scroll down. Keep, keep scrolling. Keep scrolling a little more. Till right below this picture, you're going to see two links right here. Helmet.zip and Fallout 4 X01 Armor Enclave by Beastus. And shout out to Beastus for building these. Uh, great job. And these are what are going to give you your full PDO files for Pepecura Designer. And Pepecura Designer is what you're going to actually use to open up these files. So go ahead and Google Pepecura Designer. And the first result right here, go ahead and click load, ugh, Jesus, go ahead and click the download button right here, and it's going to take you straight to the Peppercore Designer 4 download page. Go ahead and click that button, and it should download, and you go through the whole install process as normal. Now this is going to install Designer and Viewer. We don't give a shit about Viewer. Viewer does not work for our purposes because it only lets you view the files, it doesn't let you modify the scale or chain parts around, etc, etc. So we're going to open up Designer, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys what that looks like. So here we are with Pepecura Designer 4. Very nice, very clean. 
So I'm going to go ahead and maximize and then open up one of the X01 files that I just downloaded. And let's open, uh, uh, let's open the shoulder. No, wait, arm. Yeah. So here is one of the X01 arms. And you'll notice that on the left hand side of Peppercura Designer, you have a 3D view. If you right click in it, you can rotate in any direction. It's very disorienting. If you middle scroll, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. If you middle click, you can pan it in 3D space. If you've ever done CAD, this, this should be a little familiar. Now, on the right hand side is what's going to be called the unfolded view. And when you download a PDO file, or a, I'm just going to call it a PEP file from now on. When you download a PEP file, all that should already come unfolded. I might do another tutorial later on about creating your own PEP files and unfolding your own models, but that's a little bit much for today's tutorial. So when you come over here, you're going to have all these pieces. And if I rotate this around, you'll notice that when I click on these parts, it highlights the appropriate part on the 3D model. And if I zoom in, enhance, enhance, okay, there we go. If I zoom in, you can see these little tabs and these little weird lines everywhere. Let's go over real quick what these lines mean. If it's one of these lines that has large dashes and then small dots, that's a, a valley fold. That means you fold that up towards you. But if you go over here to where you just have a regular dashed line, that's a mountain fold. You fold that edge downwards. This will come into play when you actually go to build the model. So if I zoom back out, you can see that, oh, these parts are laid out pretty nicely on, on these sheets. And it is, except that if you bought normal letter-sized cardstock, this is not letter size. And one way to check that real quick is you go over to settings. You go to print and paper settings. Aha, that's size A4. I, I don't I don't know what that is. So we're going to change that over to letter. And you can change portrait landscape. Doesn't really matter. You can change margins. But you don't really have to. And everything else on here, just just leave it. Just leave it as it is. And then just click OK. And you're going to say, oh, but Danny, that messed up all my parts. And now they're not laid out properly. Yes. Which is why we're going to have to fix that. So one thing we're going to do is you could, if you wanted to, just manually move these around, but that's a lot to move around. So instead, we're going to go over to 2D menu, and we're going to go to recalculate parts layout. Now, the only thing you're going to want to change on here, do not mess with the manual settings. That's for your scale. Leave that alone. Go to your spacing of parts. And I like to make it just a quarter of an inch apart. And make sure that place parts avoiding page borders is checked. Otherwise, it'll lay them all over the place. And you hit OK. And it should make everything fit perfectly. Except sometimes it doesn't. So do go through and do check these are laid out properly. And even though it went through the trouble of recalculating everything for you, you can still go and click on things and move them using either your arrow keys or by just dragging things around. You might notice hey, this doesn't seem very space efficient. And that's correct. So I like to drag things around and just maximize the space that I have to work with. Now one thing you are going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to 2D menu and you're going to want to hit show edge ID. If you don't do that, the numbers for the corresponding flaps will not show up. And what I mean by that is if I zoom in, zoom in a little more, a little, little, little more. Okay, cool. You see how there's these numbers? For every flap that is numbered, there is a corresponding space for that flap to be glued onto on another piece. If you hit join disjoin face and you hover over one of these flaps, it will show you the corresponding flap. But do be aware that if you click that, it will force these parts to connect and it will be one large part, 
which is fine if you have a lot of space to work with, but if you don't, don't do that. See how it does that right there. If you are going to be building the X01, you do have to change the scale ever so slightly. So what you're going to want to do with every single part inside that download for the X01, keep in mind, is that you're, want to go, you're going to want to go to Settings, Change Scale, hit that button once, and then you're going to want to do it one more time. And this should give you the true proportions to the in-game model. Now once you have this ready to go, and you've got your printer set up, just send that to your printer. It should be fine. It's going to take a lot of paper, just FYI guys. This one right here, this is just the forearm. This is... This is nine pages for one arm. It's a lot of paper, so do be aware of that going in. It's going to use a lot of ink too. Thankfully though, this is black and white. You can print in color if you want to. But, but don't do it, you absolute madman. Don't do that. It's going to use all your color ink. That shit's unicorn blood. Don't waste your ink. So real quick, let's talk lines. These solid black lines are the lines that we actually cut around. These are the lines that define the boundaries of the piece. There are two kinds of folded lines. Dashed lines such as these are called mountain lines or mountain folds. And that means that if we take the piece of paper and it has a dashed line across the top, we're going to bend it downwards like so to create a mountain. These dash dot dash lines are valley folds. Valley folds are quite literally the opposite. Rather than bending down, we're going to take the piece and we're going to bend upwards, creating a valley. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece out real quick. The next part of preparing a part for folding in Pepakura is to actually score the lines. So here I'm going to show you how I score the lines. Rather than use the sharp part of the blade, I use the back, which is obviously dull. And this is where the straight edge comes into play. I lay the straight edge over the mark that I have made and then using the back of the blade I mark that line making it, making it much easier to fold down Now I've prepared this piece to glue this part onto, so this part right here will be glued right there. So I like to use my hot glue gun on a high temperature, that's not necessary, it's personal preference, but I feel like it gives me a little bit more time to work with. So I like to put a thin line. And then working quickly, I line up my slots and I push them firmly together. I let that cool for a few seconds. 
and then proceed on to the next tab. And there I have successfully glued on this one section. You can see the clean lines inside. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing. And also, please like the social media pages linked down below. I'll be uploading probably next Tuesday with a compilation video of where I've gotten with my Pipakura, along with the next couple of steps, which is going to involve fiberglassing and bondoing these pep files. So, see you guys then.